Take us into your inner chamber to discover those hidden things that we know not. We have come to drink of thee and no one will live here without the test unquenched in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I ask that you will meet us We have cried unto you. And I pray that your word will come in power this evening to build, to establish, and to transform. Thank you, dear Lord. Let there be healing, let there be miracles. Thank you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This evening, I'll be sharing with us the word of God, which I believe if you will listen carefully, it will have impact in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. My title this evening says, We are made for glory. We are made for glory. I want to beg of thee to listen carefully. Because what we are about to listen to, if you will grasp just 10% of it, it will keep you running. And the reason this topic is coming is because the church of Jesus has been static. Many have been staying in a spot and not knowing that God is God of one level to the other level, to another level, even in heaven, there are things we may not grasp until eternity. So a lot of people start with God, they get to a level they are satisfied. They build a kind of um, I'm okay. Where I am now is the topmost. And then we begin to gyrate around that dimension. And suddenly we realize that there are people we have passed we taught, but have overtaken us are far, far from where we are because we were not conscious or do not understand that God brings you to a place is where you are supposed to be for now, but you have other heights that if you allow him to process you, he will process you to that height bigger than where you have glorified and believe that this is the ultimate. Hallelujah. And that is why when a man stopped crying 
and asking God and yielding to God, God take me to another height. Now, that has caused many to go before their time because you have no more space. You have no more space. You have come to your zenith, your end. But that wouldn't have been the end of you as a Gaston. God consigned towards you. So, I want you to follow me gently as we get into this. John 17 verse 22. If you can take me fast, I'll be very happy. And the glory who thou givest me have given them that they may be one even as we are one. Jesus said, the same glory my father gave me, not a different one, the same I gave to them. The same glory my father gave to me, I did not reduce it, but I have given to them. Look at Revelation chapter 5 verse 12. If you look at that scripture very well, you will see number six among what Jesus received for us. Glory is part of it. Hallelujah. It's part of what was taken from us by Satan, which Jesus restored back to us. And when we talk about glory, Glory of God is the shining fault or public display of God's character and nature. Public display of God's character and nature is the shining fault or public display of God's character and nature. It can be referred to his presence made visible or man manifest. His presence made visible or manifest. Hallelujah. When the glory of God is upon you, it is a transformative experience that can bring about miracle and healing and breakthrough in your life. But he said it is a transformative. The glory of God is to transform you from one level of glory to another. So it's trans uh, transformative from one glory to what? To another. That can bring about miracle, healings, and breakthrough in what's life. Praise God. Amen. And again, his manifested glory is eternity revealed on earth. Eternity revealed on earth. Praise God. It's what? Eternity revealed on earth. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. In the glory of God, every need is met. In the glory of God, every need is what? Is met. The glory of God was the original environment in which mankind lived. Is the original environment which mankind lived. Are you with me? Now I have tried to explain to you 
about the glory. But then we were told in the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 23, book of Romans, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Hallelujah. He said, all have sinned. Now, no one is exempted from this. And the Bible says, all have sinned and fallen short and come short of what? Of the glory of God. That is to say, we have fallen short of it. Because of sin, because of what happened in the Garden of Eden. Praise God. When the, our first father, Adam, sinned, he brought us down. Because we were in his loins. Hallelujah. Amen. Adam was living in the environment of God's glory. Garden of Eden was an environment that man was created to dwell in the midst of God's glory. Hallelujah. He was created to dwell there. That was his original, I mean, habitation. It was a natural state for him to be. Praise God. Amen. The glory of God was the original environment in which mankind was supposed to live. That is where we lived. It was our state. But the Bible says, now we have fallen short of that because of what took place, what happened, the treason that took place in that garden. Praise God. God therefore sent him out of the garden. Praise God. Now man falls short of the glory of God. Hallelujah. Now, the final objective of Jesus' sacrifice was for restoration of God's glory. The reason, the purpose for which he came to the earth was for the restoration. The reason he went through the process, made sacrifice, was for the restoration of the glory of God back to man. Please, I want you to understand that point because it will help you on the journey we are going. Hallelujah. Amen. The restoration, the sacrifice that took place at in that cross, on that cross, the sacrifice that took place, all that Jesus went through, the final objective of that sacrifice was for restoration of God's glory. To restore man back to the original purpose of God for man. Praise God. To bring back man to the original environment in which mankind lived before the fall. To bring us back to that origin. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, if you look at the book of Hebrews, chapter 2, verse 10. The book of Hebrews, chapter 2, verse 10. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons Unto where? Unto glory. To make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. But the point I want you to understand, he said, whom are all things in bringing many sons in unto where? Unto where? Unto glory. Jesus came, paid the ultimate price to bring you and I back to glory. Our original place. The environment that we were acclimatized to before the fall. The environment where the nature of God can dwell and function effectively. But the Bible says we have fallen short of that glory. 
So Jesus came to restore us back to that originality which God established and which Adam aborted and Jesus, the second Adam, has come to restore us back to that place. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. Amen. Quickly, please. But we all, with open face, beholding us in a glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory. But we all, with open face, beholding us in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory. Even as by the Spirit, listen to that word, even as by the Spirit of the Lord, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Now, what is he telling you now, you have received Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And he made this statement there. And what is that statement? He said, Beholding us in a glass the glory of the Lord. When you got born again, you are beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, and then are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So, who is turning you from one glory to another is done by the Spirit. When you receive Christ, the Bible says you are changed into the same what? Image. What you lost, the nature that resembles God. Amen. That you lost in the garden is now restored. And then from it, it will change. And when you become the image, and now it will now change from glory to glory, even by what? the spirit now let's look at it this way now how many of you are baptized in the spirit right now whether you are baptized in the spirit or not the day you receive Christ that day the spirit of the Lord came into you now the measure is a different thing for assignment hallelujah Please answer. I say hallelujah. Amen. I say hallelujah. Amen. Now that is to say we are carriers of God's presence through his indwelling spirit. We are carriers of God's presence through his indwelling presence. They, when you go born again the spirit of God came in to inhabit you. Is that true? Now, that spirit that has come to inhabit you is that same spirit that will change you, that will cause a change from one level of glory, praise God, to another level of glory, to another level of glory, praise God. And that thing is carried out by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Now, that spirit that indwelling of the Holy Spirit in you, inside it is the Garden of Eden. In the time of old, it was in a specific place. You talk about the glory, the environment. 
That was the environment that God established for mankind to live. And that was why God will come down and they related. Am I communicating? Now, as the Spirit of God comes in, He will now begin to educate you, to process you from one level of glory to another level of glory. That is why we are not all the same. Depending on the level that you are. Are you with me now? Now, and he said, by the spirit of the Lord is the one that will process you. Is the one that will help you. You don't know the pathway. If you understand me, wave your hand. Praise God. Now, that is the spirit of God that is indwelling you That spirit that is residing in you carries along with it the garden of Eden. So, now that you are born again, you are a child of the Lord, the spirit of God is inhabiting you you are anywhere you go, you are carrying the garden of plenty, the garden of Eden, that environment. You are carrying it along with you. That was the original environment in which mankind lived. Praise God. I say praise the Lord. Now, if you look at John 15 verse 5, I am divine. You are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Praise God. He said, without me, you can do nothing. Without the Spirit of God, you can do nothing. Without Jesus, you can do nothing. I am the one to process you, the Holy Spirit. If you have the Spirit of God in you, you are back. You are a carrier of God's glory in a measure. The garden is back. Remember, I'm talking about what you have, but manifesting it is a different thing altogether. But whether you have it, you have it. Are you with me? Everything is back. The glory is back. The garden of Eden is restored back. You have been restored. The Spirit of God came in his, he came with everything you lost. But the manifestation is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that you have these things, they are indwelling in you, but the manifestation is a different thing altogether. Am I communicating? Now, Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. 
Christ in you, the hope of glory. Did you see that scripture? Let's tie it with another scripture. Romans chapter 9, 22 to 24. Nay! 22 to 24. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known Endured with much long suffering, suffering the, the vessels of rot fitted to destruction. And that he might make known the riches of his glory. Listen. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. Who are the vessels of mercy? Oh my God. Who are the vessels of mercy? Listen, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto what? Unto glory. Shout hallelujah. Look at verse 24. Even us whom he had called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. He wanted to show. That was what he did to Pharaoh. That he might show to the vessel of mercy the riches of his glory. Is that not true? I say, is that not true? Praise God. The Bible calls it the riches of his glory. But wait a minute. Praise God. Now, somebody say, I'm a carrier of God's indwelling spirit. Say it again. One more time. Now, as a carrier of God's dwelling spirit, which could not come into me until I receive Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Is that true? You know, Jesus made a statement and said to them, it is good, let me go. If I go, I will send him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He said, he will take up mine and show it to you. Is that true? Now, he is gone. The spirit has come. He said, I have many things to have said to you, but you can't handle them. But however, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will do what? He will reveal all truth to what? To you. Hear me. He said, he will take what belongs to me. Now, the garden of Eden was lost and they were sent out now that you are born again are you hearing me the environment which can only function with the newness of your life now that you are born again has returned back did you understand what I'm saying the environment has now returned back how did it come back? It came back with the spirit that is indwelling you. So as you are walking, anywhere you go, you are walking with the Eden inside you. Is that true? Fine. You are walking with the Eden inside me. So as I'm walking, I am walking with the Eden, garden of plenty. I am carrying it. It's my original environment that is meant for my nature. Praise God. Because when Jesus, when I received Christ, I returned back to the nature I was before the fall of Adam. Am I communicating? Praise God. Amen. But the problem is this now. There is nothing that Christ left behind that he did not come in with, into me. Is there anything he forgot? 
Is there anything he did not come with? He came in with healing. He came in with miracle. He came, remember, he came in with his nature. Like I said, when we talk about glory, we are talking about the character and the nature. Praise God. It is the character of God to live. It's the God of love. It's God of peace. Are you hearing me? He cannot commit sin. It's not part of his character. He cannot be poor. Praise God. Amen. I, I say amen. It is his nature to heal. Miracle. Breakthroughs. It's his nature. So it's nothing. Say hey. hey. Well, no, no. It's his nature. Hallelujah. So when you begin to manifest the glory of God, the, first of all, the character of God and the nature, other natures follows. God cannot live in sin. God cannot tell lies. God cannot commit immorality. It's not in his character. Neither is it in his nature. It is the nature of God to heal. It is the nature of God for miracle. It is the nature of God for breakthroughs. Is that not true? It is the nature of God to make the impossible possible. It is his nature with him. Nothing shall be impossible. And he said that this sign shall follow them that believe. If you carry the same nature he carries, you become a sign and a miracle and a healing producer. Praise God. So when we talk about the glory, the shining glory, we are talking about the character and the nature of God. Man was never created for sin. Man was never created for evil until he took of that fruit of good and evil. That was not the way God created man. But Jesus has come to restore us back and now his spirit is indwelling us. What is the purpose of the spirit inhabiting us? Is to establish us. In all he came in with. So that they can be made manifest here on earth. Hallelujah. You know I tell you. His manifested glory. Is eternity revealed on earth. I made that. I mentioned it there. You. Are to reveal. The glory of God here on earth. Oh my God. Are you there? His manifest, manifested glory is eternity revealed on earth. So when you are here on earth and you are manifesting the glory of God, you are revealing what? Eternity, you are revealing eternity, the power of eternity. You are revealing it here on earth. Don't worry, we'll get a little deeper. Now, hallelujah. How to unlock the glory. When he came, he came in his fullness. We are restored back. The lost glory restored back. Everything restored back. But you can die without manifesting any of them. Listen. When Jesus came to this earth and after the spirit of the Lord came upon him, are you aware that the spirit of God led him to where? To the wilderness. Now, it wasn't the devil that led him to the wilderness. Please follow me. When he led him to the wilderness, he had an encounter in the wilderness. 
Now, when he survived the teachings he needed, the Bible says he learned obedience by what he suffered. Is that in your Bible? Why the Spirit took him there, God, excuse me, why should you take your son into such a venture? Now, how many of you are aware it was after the 40 days and 40 night encounter and the Bible says that he returned in the power and his fame went abroad. <laughs> Amen? Now listen. He was, he had the spirit. Was there manifestation? No. No. Because that was, it was after that his work started. Come on, am I talking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was after that, that his work started. But it wasn't the devil that led him. It, the Bible said the spirit pursued him. Is that true? Is, please, is that true? Now, you are a, being a, the indwelling spirit of Jesus is inside you. Now, he has come to do a work in you to establish you and to become to begin to see miracles, healing, to express the presence of God that is you are carrying. Is that true? Now, Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are they called according to his purpose? Listen. He said all things. Now Jesus was led into the wilderness by the spirit. Now whatever God allowed in your life there is a purpose. The purpose is to reveal that which is in you that is locked. Because you are not qualified yet. By the school of the Holy Ghost. He wants to qualify you. Every one of you here want to see miracle. You want to see healing. You want to see breakthrough. You want to see it doesn't matter the scarcity. The tariff that they are changing. I can never be affected. Every one of you want to see it. But is it true that all of us will see it? But listen, all of us are given the same opportunity. Praise God. Are you with me? And he said, all things work together. God will allow a situation to come around you. How many of you are aware many of us fight agents of God? Please listen to me. This is where many of us are rotten in. Are you hearing me? A man is giving a whip to whip you with that whiplash into what you are supposed to enter and you are finding it difficult to enter. How many of you are aware a man that is very comfortable will begin to be restful in that place? Talk to me. Stop looking at me. I'm not carrying anything. Is that true? Now listen. The Spirit of God will allow orchestrate a situation that will make you uncomfortable. And because of that uncomfortability, your prayer life will change. Your word life will change. Your modus operandi will be affected. But 
men he circumvented. Many are bought the schools established by the Holy Spirit that would have qualified them to a higher level. Listen, they called for it. It has come now. Yet, they did not understand. And they still, they continue to mark time. Listen, the worst of it is that a man has come to, let me say, the height of that shining thing there. Now, listen, he has more than one million of miles to go. But he's here. He's dancing around here. Oh, hallelujah. I mean, okay, I can feed my children. I can pay my school fees. I have a big house. I have these. I have cars. What more remaining? You don't know what you're talking about. God speaks of generations. Are you hearing me? He talk about nations. It's not about you. It's not just about your family. It's about using you to affect his kingdom. Using you to bring light to his kingdom. Using you that because you are alive, millions have come into the kingdom. For your sake, the jobless have received job. And that little thing you have begin to affect your brain. When they say something like this, okay, I, I won't, okay, let me show them. It's a lie. You are nobody. God will change you and replace you with somebody far better, younger, bigger, and more with good heart than you. So, it is good for you and I to yield to the processing of the Holy Spirit is inside you. When you were praying, say, God, change me. God, help me. God, I want to be what you want me to become. When he comes, you stand against the process. And you find yourself, you have been in one place for more than 20 years, 14 years. That is not the will of God. You are asking, all oh, the prophetic word I had, I have not seen them. How will you see them when you are the one aborting God's purpose for your life? Is anybody with me? Praise God. You are carrying everything. Are you, are you with me? But to unlock it, you don't have the strength. The Holy Spirit, just like he unlocked that which was in Jesus, he wants to unlock what is in you, but he's going to send you to the school. Wow. But when he sends you to the school, will you be willing? Will you be willing to allow Listen, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Yes, verse, yes, 8. We are troubled on every side yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Yes. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Yes. Always bearing about in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in where? In our body. That's the key word. There's this treasure. There's this treasure. God will take you from one level to another level. Don't struggle with him. Allow him to process you. Listen carefully. Romans 8 verse 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. There's glory that shall be revealed in us. 
endure that pain, go through the school. Go through the school of the Holy Spirit. Umokwai said to me, say my son, a lot of us are not willing to go through this school. Many come pray and say, God, establish a school for me. You know why? Because it will temper with their comfort. Yet, they are carrying a heavy weight of glory, yet not revealed. Praise the Lord. Are you there with me? Now look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 17. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of what? Of glory. Friends, hear me. God is God of principle. I have all said this. Until you go through the process, you will not see the glory. You are praying, you are fasting. Be sensitive when it comes to take you on the narrow path to that school where it has to qualify you because there are people waiting. Listen, they will wait to a time they can't wait anymore. Someone else has to take over. We are interlinked with one another. Are you with me? Listen, there are people waiting for you to qualify for their deliverance. Oh God. They are praying, God. They are praying. You who's supposed to give them, you who's supposed to employ them, you who's supposed to feed them, you are robusting. You are so happy where you are now. And yet that place will stink, will decay. He said, you have come past this mountain long enough. You will stink in this place. You have to move northward. You have to move. You have stayed here too long enough. There are many waiting. They are calling from America. They are calling from Canada. They are calling from all over this nation. They are calling for Africa. They are waiting for you. God showed it to you. How what your greatness will be. But you have limited yourself. Because you are not willing for the Holy Spirit to unlock the glory that you carried inside. God will bring you to a place where they will help you to unlock the place and the devil knows. The devil begins to show you visions that will poison your mind. And you think you know what you're doing. Not know you are just mental. There's a glory that must be revealed in us. And because that glory is not revealed, you don't even know which one is righteous and which one is of demons. You categorize all of them to one because your short-sightedness, because you do not understand the voice of God, you do not understand interpretations of visions, and you model things together, and the devil will be clapping. He said, I messed him up. There are many who hear voices that are strange voices. They have nothing to do with God. Are you with me now? One day, my senior brother did something and his name is Moses. One day, while relating with God, he said, excuse me, God, excuse me. He said, God, excuse me. 
show me your glory. Moses, I shall show you my glory. In verse 19, and he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And I will break gracious to whom I will be gracious. And I will have show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in the cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. I will take away my hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. And I want you to look up, because I want to share things with you. In 1975, 1995, I was praying, asking God, Lord, I want to carry your glory. I want to move in the power. Then the power came on me in 1988. But I, I, I was asking God because there are realms and dimensions I want to see. God said to me, son, I've said this time without number. If I give you what you're asking for now, you will die. I couldn't understand what God was saying. I want your power to heal him, the deliverance, miracle here and there, your name be glorified and you say, I will die. Abba. Now, listen to me. Here, Moses came. Say, God, we'll be related. He said, you know me by name. That was what you said. But now, Lord, I want to see your glory. You know what that means? All that you are, I want to see it. He said to Moses, Moses, I will make all my goodness. I will declare the name of the Lord. Everything I will do. But listen, you can't see my face. Do you know what that means? You can't see my face. When you see my face, you've seen me completely. And you are not qualified to see face. You have not been groomed to that dimension that you are qualified. But I will show you, I will do something in you now that will make you to see an aspect of me. But what you are asking for, I still need you on the assignment. I wouldn't. Come, Moses. Come with me, Moses. There is a place I will put you. You will be qualified to have a glimpse. Did you hear what I said? He said, there is a rock by me. Stand on that rock. That rock will qualify you. Listen. I have taken you away from the foundations of your forefathers. I have taken you away from the foundations of your mothers. I have brought you to stand on the foundation of the rock. As you stand on this rock, I will cover your face. Are you hearing me? Then, when I pass, I will make you see my back. But you can't tell how I look like. Did you hear what I said? He took him out of his foundation and placed him on the foundation of the rock. And that rock is Jesus Christ. Wow. 
As you stand on this foundation, you'll be able to see my back. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, it was after this encounter, the next chapter, 34, what happened in that 34 was that he gave him the law. He gave him what? What does that mean? This book of the law shall not depart from your face day and night because by it I will process you from one degree of glory to another degree of glory to another degree of glory. You cannot swallow all together. You will be consumed. You will be consumed because I have to process you. Look at that 34 verse 28. Exodus 34 verse 28. And he was there with the Lord. 40 days and 40 nights. He did neither eat bread or drink water. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant. The ten commandments. He gave it to him. And he said, this book of the law shall not depart. You must feast on it. So that you will not offend me. You will grow thereby. I'll be able to process you. For you to move from one realm of glory to another realm of glory. And he came in the book of Numbers. He said, Moses, there is another aspect. I want to change your ministry now. I want to take you from the glory where you are to another glory. Are you with me? Because Moses would have started glorying around what he has. God said, no. There are levels you are yet to cover. And God came. God said, Moses, excuse me. Last time, I asked you to pick the rod, hit the rock. You hit it, what I came for. But now, that rock, that rod can be stolen from you. That rod can be confiscated. Now, I want to change your ministry from the ministry of the rod to the ministry of speaking. How many of you are aware that that is another level of glory? Praise God. Praise God. Moses came, but you see, the devil is always there to make you miss him. And Moses missed God. And when he missed God, God said, my son is meant to die but once, not twice. You will die by yourself. And when he came to discuss the issue, God said, don't discuss it. Now listen, how many of you are aware that when Joshua started the ministry, he never involved the rod? Eh? That is why they say, you are of Joshua's generation. Oh my goodness. How many of you have seen people tell you you are of Joshua's generation? You are of Joshua's generation. You are a generation that speaks, that declares. Praise God. Mo Moses missed out. And Joshua caught it. And he ran with it. Praise God. Joshua did unusual things. Who asked the sun to stand still? And the moon not to go down. God honored his voice. Not by the rod, but by spoken words. What am I trying to let you know? There are glories that are before you. But you know what? You have to allow him. That is why you have the Holy Spirit. And part of his work to burn up the chaps in you. To qualify you to that realm of manifesting God's glory, God's power, God's presence, God's miracle, God's healing.
a mystery. If you watch, one of the things the devil does is to make you not to regard the office of the Holy Spirit. Is to make you not to function with the person of the Holy Spirit. Because he is the revelator. He knows why you came to be dead. He knows the type of school to set up for you. He knows the type of pastor that can pastor you. He knows, he knows, he knows. And that is why if you want him and your school to be easy and cheap, stop struggling with him. Stop fighting with him. He brought you there, but you hate it. He brought you to that man. You don't like him. You will never be qualified. He's wiser than you do. He said, should you also go? He said, no. You are the one with the words of eternal life. So where do we go to? Our future is in your hands. Your future is in the hand of the Holy Spirit. He's the one having a record of your person. He knows who you are. He knows what is able to break that stubborn spirit in you. He knows it. He knows what type of hammer he will use. And he said, all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. He's working out for your good. He's paying me. Come on, don't bother yourself. He's working out something good for you. He said, oh, I'm feeling so bad. They are calling me names. Shut up. That name calling. Allow it. Let them say you are a buffoon. Let them say you are a monkey. It doesn't matter. He is doing, listen, as you yield to those things, Paul said, I count all dung, all my position, all my bragado of being among the Sahendrans, my PhDs of PhDs. I am a voice among the Jewish religion. He said, all those things that I am, I can't them down. That I may win Christ. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his sufferings. We want to see God. But we don't. We want to see his power. We want to see his glory. We are not willing to pay the price. The little we see, we build a monument around it. I hear from the voice of him that said, liberate yourself from self-will and self-comfort. Listen, Moses started his ministry at the age of 80. Baba Deboe is saying now, I'm just taking off my ministry. But all over the world, he's there. Known all over the world. He's always very small in his own eyes. That's a man of great authority, yet highly humble and submissive. Little team, you don't know me. All things work together. That suffering cannot be compared with that greater heavy weight of glory that is coming forward to your life. 
the way they talk to me, I can't understand. Do you know me? I am seasoned. Who are you, Mrs. Big Stuff? Who are you, Mr. Big Stuff? That is why you have gone round the mountain severally. It's only the spirit of Jesus that can unlock the glory inside you. He has restored all that needed to be restored. But the manifestation the fault is here. Don't you know who I am? Many things we do is for men to sing our praise. Even the gifts we give out is for a purpose. I want to load it in your life. I want to return you as a close power. Our intentions are wrong. I self is what I want to do. I don't care if I don't want to do hell to hell. No. You can't serve God with that attitude. Never. You can only serve God by obedience, submissiveness, and yieldedness to the spirit of grace, not to man. Wonderful Holy Spirit. Jesus handed us over to the Spirit. He's your teacher. He's only the one that can teach you the word and reveal yourself to him. I want you to bow your head. Have you ever asked yourself, is that all he has for me? Is that all? Unbelievers are so worried. But the church, we claim what we are not. In Jesus' name. My fathers used to make parables. They said, when you come out of your house, a little child that you know when the mother was got married, begin to abuse you anyhow. He said, don't reply. There's something about that child. God is telling me, death is occurring like no man's business. God is waiting, but he's, he's losing it now. Patience is running the course of his timing. Of his timing. And most death that will occur is sudden. Sudden. So that we don't come by the ground. You have not, I have not allowed him to do a work in us. Spirit of Jesus, we are here this evening, Lord. Help us. Help us to stop walking in the flesh. Looking for what is not necessary. And those things that are necessary, we have abandoned them because of self-will.
We pat ourselves at the back too quickly. We, they hail us and they enter our wings, not knowing that it's to our destruction. A lot of ground to cover. My son, that do come and lead this, come and pray for us with a strong prayer. We need to be prayed for. Can we open our mouths and bless the Lord and ask, let the Lord help us that we might manifest his glory. It is not by power or by mind, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Therefore, ask the Lord to help us, to help us, to help us. That the glory which is to be revealed in us, let us go through the process, through the school of the Holy Ghost, to manifest this glory in our time and in our season. Let every encumbrance, every hindrance that is hindering us, let it be cut off now in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and command every hindrance from going through the school of the Holy Ghost. Let it be cut off now. That the glory that is to be revealed in our bodies may show forth in our time in our seasons in the name of Jesus Christ oh God arise help us in this season Lord that we might not miss it that we might not miss oh God that which is our portion in the seasons that you have ordained for us to show forth your glory in the name of Jesus Christ oh God help us oh God help us somebody open your mouth and pray reconta men do to burn resume Telemendo on Tome Etica, Reconta Menda Bondo Bofaha, Rusinin Elecuntame Edubri, Boron Coto Edoba, Men Sotom Beendo Otto, Ruminin Ele Sukiri Prando, Menko Payada Braduski Efidi, in the name of Jesus. God is not Pasha. If he could give Moses, uh, Joshua the grace to speak and the sun stood uh, and the moon stood uh, in the sundial of Ahaz, he can do the same for us. He is more than willing to cause our words to come to pass. Ask the Holy Ghost to help us to go through the school. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Father will receive grace, oh God. Lord, grace to go through the process. Lord, grace to go through the process. Help us to go through the process. Ah, my father help us to go through the process because without your help we can do nothing. Therefore, Lord my God, we receive help from above. We receive help from above. We receive help from above. Help us, oh God, from the sanctuary and send us help out of Zion. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Diga Rakatambre and Toboyo Ruminin Elen Tobahanta Rikanta Lima Lengredo Sotoba Jimarende Bonko Porondo Boyondo Lesudi in Taligala Tushne Eskede Yele Conto Membedo and Toba Bulin in Elen Kuvi in Tuvi Zilin Talima Hanka Barando Lima Anka Badio Reka Pacata Libre Es Soto Zunini and Kerendo Kofaduski Zento and Coparando Lima Ankaparan, Randole Zedos and Zubregede, Kere Conto e Bayanto, Bully Minini in Tupi in Tupi Ika, Kayele Conto and a Suti Libin, Shiru Fahan Taban, Reke Koto le Copadia, Remanda Bra Anta Lima Anta, Sikatosne Eskete Bregede, Ragababada Rabagada 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 Rabagada, Rika Parada Rabagada Rabagata Nigaraba, Ruvini. And Kere Contome and Zadia, Zilidis and Zutilicanto, Brando and Bregado Cofecadia, Recunta Men Zedoloskidia, Gimarando and Copayondo Bohonto, Eco Peledo Cofa, Kilin and a Contalin Zadi, Risutili Brigaduskianda, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray.
Our Father has told us this evening, Eden has been restored in us by the Spirit of God. And we are to manifest it in our bodies. Therefore, we are going to ask the Lord, oh God, press us until this manifestation begins. Because without the grape being pressed, the wine and the oil shall not come forth. Therefore, Lord, pass us through the threshing holder. Pass us through the threshold. Pass us through the press. Press us, oh God. And we are willing to allow you for the press. press Press us until the glory is released. Press us until the glory is made manifest. In the name of Jesus, help us, O Lord my God, to go through the pressure. Like grace, go through the wine press. Help us to go through the press of the Holy Ghost to manifest your glory, O God, that has been revealed by your indwelling spirit in us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Zubregade, Kiri do blendo le pranto, Sento ele curianda, Manda liga ancarianda la vasante. Oh God, we allow ourselves to go through the press. Ah, like grapes that are pressed into wine. Press us, Lord my God, until the Holy Ghost is manifest. Until the glory is seen in us. Until the glory is made manifest. Lord, we submit ourselves unto the pressure. We submit ourselves unto the press of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jiru kapata leke topa. Kere konto entobayata ligabaka. Rikalando zendele mandali kriando. Ruminin ele prunta lima ankapika. Rakatali grede lebo santo lima hanta. Jimaya indele grede bo seketo ligade. Eko porando bo santo bayoto ho. Rika parando lima enkredo sekede. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. We're going to pray and ask the Lord lastly that let him carry us from one glory level to another. As he presses us that we shall be lifted from one glory level to another. Help us, Lord, for us to manifest your glory from one glory level to another. Oh God, as you carry us by your spirit. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Somebody just lift up your hands and wave to the Lord and thank the Lord for answer prayers. Father, we thank you for answers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen. Moment you make up your mind to be what God wants you to be. He will make things clear to you. He will make you understand it. But whatever you value more than what God is telling you, that thing will kill you, will keep you down. May I say this? You see, most of the great men of God you see have one thing or the other they are going through within themselves, but they will not tell you. But they will tell you that those things have no power to kill them. Yet, they are 80 something, 90 something. There are many things allowed to humble you. One day I went to him, I said, Father, what in the world is going on? And I bothered myself, he came and said, son, tell me which power is big enough to penetrate the fire I've encircled you with. And he said, only what I allow can come in. He said, whatever I allow is to do a work in you. I said, so you are involved in this matter. I said, God, you are involved in this matter. They are things they cause pain. I know of a man, he said, when you become overcharged in the spirit realm, he said, I have placed a bead. He said, I place a bead. Like, it's like a bead in the mouth of a horse. That when you overcharge, you draw the bead. I speak to somebody. Hey, I'm about to die. This thing wants to kill me. Hey, let me stay in the house. Hey, let me, hey. There are people, it has happened worse than you are seeing, you are hearing, that you are frightened about. Yeah, it can kill, but not when you are in the purpose. <laughs> the, 
you are, we are in a world of mysteries. And until it's well understood, you trouble yourself over nothing. I bless you today. Is there any sick among you? Be healed in the name of Jesus. Baba, take them by your spirit. Let them go and think and ponder on what you have spoken to us. Let each go with anger, realizing that we are yet to scratch anything and allowing the person of the Holy Spirit to take preeminence in our lives that we might yield our fullness to him that he might direct our pathway and our steps. Wonderful Holy Spirit, we have many years ignored your ministry in our lives, but today we open up, take over completely. Use us to your glory, dear Lord. Take us over and have your way. In Jesus' name, amen.